Yes, so we, we look at confidence intervals. We start by looking at the confidence intervals. So just as I introduced last time, I said that whenever you are researching, when you're researching, or what happens is that when you collect data, uh, there are some key parameters that you need to use for you to draw right or valid conclusions or, or right inferences. So what happens is that you collect the data, you compute your means, your standard deviations, all those things so that you are able to draw at inferences or draw conclusions about some issues. You make the information, you communicate the information. So the idea behind the confidence intervals, we're trying to test now the validity of the statements that people give or the claims just as say. So you find that there can be a certain claim that is there. Uh, maybe let, 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 let me claim in the now hypothesis and claim that uh, uh, the mean age, I'll be using this same example again and again so that you don't forget. The mean age for the first year students at UNSA is 21 years old. Okay, that is the first claim or the nine hypothesis. So now someone will come in, okay? Someone will be skeptical about what I've said. They'll say, is this really true? So they would want to test the validity of the claim that I have postulated. So what usually happens is that there are some key techniques or methodology that we use to test the validity of those statements. So one of them, the first one is what is called the, the confidence, the confidence interval approach. Okay. The confidence interval approach. Then the other one is called the, the Z statistics. You use the Z statistics. You use the T statistics. Um, uh, from the T statistics, you use the proportions. Uh, from the proportions, you also use the chi-square. Okay, the chi-square. From the chi-square, you use the p-value approach. The p-value approach. All these are the different uh, techniques that you can use to test it the validity of the claims that people postulate. Is that fair? Yes. Yes. So we have the following now. We are starting with the confidence interval. So as I'm going to be moving, you should be following and relate what I've just introduced. Okay, when do you use which one? When do you use what one? What is this? What is this all about? So that when we do, when you follow through the questions that I give, it should be perfect. Fine. Okay. So number one, and we know that the confidence interval for the population mean, uh, the mean is mu. I said the population mean is mu. Uh, this symbol, we call it mu. Yeah, this, this is for the population. Let me change. Uh, this is for the population mean, mu. Okay. Then uh, the standard deviation for the population is this one. Yeah. So. What happens is that now, when you're talking about two points and the interval estimates, you need to start by understanding what a point estimate is. So a point estimate is basically just a single, a single number. So you are given, so for a single number, such as a sample mean, okay, the sample variance, the sample, the, the sample proportion. Okay, these are the common ones. You have the sample mean x bar. You have the sample variance s. Uh, you have um, or s squared, of course. You also have uh, the proportions as well. So those are just the when, when that one single number is called a point estimate. So a confidence interval provides additional information uh, about the viability of the estimate. So we're asking ourselves about that estimate. Is it within the chosen range? Okay, is it really within the chosen range? Okay. So what we're trying to do is to introduce you to the concept on how we create the range. For example, you want to, you want to say, just as we said, we said the mean age is 21. Then when you are testing, 
you are going to create some, some range, okay? If you're using the populations, your range will be X bar uh, plus or minus, okay? The Z statistics alpha over two, um, yeah, alpha over two, the standard deviation over the square root of N. Did you get that? This is how you create the confidence interval. So the confidence interval for the mean is created by that. So where you, you get the mean, what happens under this one is that you get the mean. When you get the mean, that the population mean, of course, you write it, then the upper limit, the upper limit of the, the, the what's this, the interval, which is the, the highest, the, um, how, how would I say, the, the highest estimate, is, is found by adding this part, we call it the margin error. This is the Z alpha over two standard deviation over the square root of N. We use a person to just to demonstrate this. I'm sure there will be a person. Sometimes, most of the times I run after, I, I run after the lecture, you find, you find that say, I go for the, the slides, but you will be able to understand. So this is the, 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 the margin of error. So what happens is that when you add this margin of error, you have the highest score, the highest rate, like the, the highest limit. Then uh, when you subtract this margin of error from the same mean, this mean, the point is, this one is the point is, you have the lower, the lower limit just like that. So the question of the day we are asking ourselves is that, is this really mean that we're given, which is 21 years, 21 years, right? Is it within the range, the desired range? That is what the confidence interval approach tries to seek to find. Okay? okay. Yes. So if you're given, uh, if you're given, for example, 95% confidence interval for the population mean mu, then it is said to be the probability uh, between the lower limit and the, the upper limit B is equal to 0 0.95. So we are saying the probability or the chance that that mu, that B, okay, lies between this interval is within the interval. It is what? It is 95%. So confidence interval simply means how confident are, are, are we, or what is the probability that this number we are talking about within the desired range, which means uh, that desired range, it is giving us what is true about uh, what we're talking about. Okay, like, is it really statistically different from what we expected it from being? For example, we expected the population mean what, if you get one, uh, 21 years old, then you find that it is maybe 19 or maybe it is 27. So the question of the day is if the, the mean that's 21 falls within the range that you're going to get, I'll show, I'll show you how to get that range. It means that we are failing to, to reject the null hypothesis. That simply means that we can, uh, it is true. That simply means that it is true that most of the best year students are 21 years old. But if that 21 is outside this range, the, the interval, then we reject the now hypothesis, which simply means we are saying, no, that 21 actually is not true that, uh, it is not true that uh, most of the best years are 21 years old. So the question of the day now, the take home message is we are asking ourselves, is the parameter that we're given or the estimate, whether it's a mean uh, or the proportion, okay, or the variance within the range. If it is within the range, then we are okay. If it is outside the range, then we reject it, the first claim. Did you get the idea? Yes, I have. Do you have a question? No, no question yet. Okay, so an interval, gives a range of values that just as i said already gives the range the range of values so this is the same thing that he is explaining here the point estimate which can either be the mean 
plus or minus the critical value. This critical value is one way. Z alpha over two. I'll show you where alpha, this one is the significance level. It is usually given the question, the significance level. Standard deviation or over the root of any. This one is called the standard error. This is the standard error, okay? Then the critical value is this one. We'll show you how we can create. It's a number that you get from the standard normal distribution table. I'll show you how we get this critical value. Then you should be fine, okay? Okay. Okay. So let's see actually what is there. Okay. Now. So what happens is that when you're creating the intervals and levels of confidence, um, uh, this is just the same thing that this is right. Okay. I I sound so disorganized from following the lecture sometimes because I go <laughs> after them. So anyway just follow me nice yeah okay. i i'm not i'm not used of reading the I'm, I'm used of preparing for the classes then just come and talk okay so what is there is it when you are given the data that is normally distributed like this this data is said to be normally distributed which means that the the, the right side is equal to the left side hey okay. So here, this is where we put the critical value, the critical Z, and here we put the critical Z, the right. So what happens is that this region after the critical value is a rejection what? The rejection region. The rejection region is, is equal to what? To alpha. Okay, this A, this uh, something that looks like A. Did you get that? Yes, I have. And the, since this, this is standard normal distribution table is equal to one or equal to 100 at the same time. If the, the data is, uh, is normally distributed like this, then it means that this alpha will be divided by two, okay? You will divide the, it by two so that one part goes this side, then the other one comes this side. So that when you add this half plus this half plus this range here, you should get a hundred, okay? So the take home message or what is more important to learn is that uh, the data will be distributed like this. Any value that falls after the critical value Z, this one is rejected. If the critical, if the value that you find is after this region, you reject the null hypothesis. Then if it comes this side on the left side as well, you reject. But if it, the value is in between here, you fail to do what? You fail to reject the null hypothesis. Clear? Please come again on that. Okay. So I was saying that when you're testing for the hypothesis, for example, you are using the Z statistics of which I will, I will, I will, I will speak loudly when it comes to that. I, you know, sometimes when, when you hear me not placing much emphasis, just know that I know I will still talk about it uh, as I go yeah. on. Okay. So the Z critical Z up, you have the value that is you get from the standard normal distribution table. Even here you have the Z statistics. So what happens is that you, this one you get, this Z value, you get it from the table. Then it, there is the Z that you calculate based on the parameters that you're given in the question. Then when you compare, you find that that Z you have calculated, maybe it falls on this right side. Maybe it is somewhere here. It's greater than this Z. It means that it falls in the rejection one region, okay? Then you reject it, the now hypothesis. If the Z value for, uh, comes after the critical Z, the critical Z is found from the table. We'll show you how we get it, okay? Even this one, the calculated Z will also talk about it very soon. So now, here is a question that we have. Okay, we, we have the person. The person says a sample of, okay, the, the person says that the sample of 11 seconds from a large normal population has a mean resistance, uh, has, a, has a mean resistance of 2.20 ohms. And we know from past testing that the population standard deviation is 0.35 ohms. So can we determine at five at 95% significance or competency interval 
for the true resistance of the population? That's a question that you have. Can I just ask you for about one or two minutes? I'll be, I'll be coming, just one or two minutes. Okay. Okay, uh, are you there? Hello? Hi, Hello? I'm okay, here. Here, here is an example now. We call an example. A sample of 11 circuits. There is a sample size of 11 circuits, which means our N is equal to what? 11, right? The sample, sample size is always N, I. N is the sample size from a large population has a mean of, so the mean from the sample I said it is X bar, right? Yes, the mean from the sample, it has got, the, the sample has got the mean of what? 2.20, okay? We know from the past testing that the population standard deviation, so they, they, they already calculated the standard deviation and gave us 0 0.2, Three five forty ohms. Then, can we determine at ninety five percent confidence interval for the true mean resistance of the population? So we just need to find out whether this mean, right, this is two point two zero, falls within the range. So, how we do it is that um, we are told to determine at ninety five uh, confidence interval now. At 95 confidence interval simply means that the significance level alpha 
will be equal to 100 minus what? Minus 95, which will, this, that's in percentage, of course. That would be equal to 0 0.4, 0 0.5, that's 5%. It's 95, 100 minus 95 is 5%, right? Which is same as 0 0.05. Hello? Hello? Hello, can you hear me? I am, I'm here, I can just... Okay. See now how we create the confidence in them. This is what I want you to pay attention to. Okay, so check. We have found our parameters, right? Our figures, our numbers, just like that. So we need to create the confidence in them. Let me just go here so that you so what it means is that we need to to create the confidence interval. And I said to create confidence interval, we say x bar mean plus or minus uh, the z statistics, right? Alpha over what? Over two. Okay. Times what? The standard deviation over the square root of, of n, okay? The standard deviation over the square root of what? Of n. Have you followed? Yes, I have. Okay, so where, where we put now our x bar, uh, we need to put our x bar. Our x bar is, uh, is a blue man. It is what? 2 point what? 2.20, right? Plus or minus the Z of alpha over two, alpha over two. We don't know the alpha over two yet. The standard deviation is what? 0 0.35, isn't it? Over the root of 11, the square root of what? Of 11. Are we together? Hello? Yes, we are. This is a okay. complicated. They are complicated. Hey, okay. This is a formula. It's just this formula. Let's get this formula. Okay. So X bar is the population B, uh, is the sample mean. Okay. You put the sample mean that we're given in the question. It is given in the question. We are told that in the question, the sample mean is what? 2.20. So you write here where the sample mean, uh, you put 2.20 2 like that, plus or minus the Z alpha over two times the standard deviation is what? Our standard deviation is 0 0.35, isn't it? That is what the question says. It says that this population standard deviation is 0 0.35 over the square root of n. Now I end the sample size is 11. Did you get it now? Yes. Okay. So what you need to know now from here, I think everything will be now straightforward, but you need to know how, to, the, the most thing that I place emphasis is how to find this one, this critical value. These are the things that are very straightforward. How do you get the critical value? It is alpha over two, okay? Then we have said the, our alpha is what? Our alpha is equal to 5%, isn't it? The, the significance level. By the way, when you add the confidence interval plus the significance level, you should get 100%. So to get the significance level, you say 100% minus the confidence interval that you're given, okay? The confidence interval is 95%. So you say 100% minus 95. Obviously, you get 5%, right? Significance level. So you say 0 0.05. That's the 5%. It's the same thing. Did you get that? Hello?
Yes, I've got it, Aya. Yeah, so it's the formula says it is alpha over two. So you divide this by what? By two. So it will be what? It will be 0 0.025, right? When you divide this by two, because this says alpha should be divided by what? By two, right? By uh -huh. okay. So you are looking for the Z value. Listen now. You are looking for the Z value that corresponds to this number, which is 0 0.025. That's the, the Z value that you are looking for. You look for it from the standard D normal distribution table. Okay. So how do you find that value? This is what you should pay attention. How do you find the, that value? Okay. So here are the steps to take very short steps. It's a very short step. What you do is this is 0 0.012. You should subtract it from one because why subtracting it from one? Because the standard normal distribution table in the total area is equal to one. So you subtract this number from one. What do you get? One minus 0 0.025. One minus zero point two five is zero point nine seven five, right? Hello. Yes. Yes, so now, let me show you where you get it now. From 0 0.09, 0 0.975, this value, this number we have found, is the number that you're going to look for from the standard normal distribution table. You look for the Z value, which is the critical value to put, which corresponds to this area. So, and this is how you do it. So let me show, share the screen with you. I'm trying to find a map. Hello. Hello. I can get you. Okay. Let, 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 me, let me just show you how how you use the standard normal distribution table because I think okay. that is one of the most important things. Okay. okay. Standard normal distribution table and the statistics. Okay, see, see here. Have you seen it? Yes, I have. Uh -huh. So when you come to this table, I think your lecture explained about something about this table. It should have. If you did it, then it should have. Um, this is the table. So you're looking for the area, the number 0 0.97, what, five, okay? So you are looking for this number. Where can we locate that number? Where is it? Are you able to locate it? There are many numbers here, okay? But you're looking Still for looking. this number. Uh -huh. Okay, so if you look in the line of 1.9, 1.9, you find it here, right? Are you able to follow? I can't see it. You can't see it? Okay, I can see it now. Okay. Then you move upwards like this. So have you seen the two numbers, the, the two numbers in which it lies, right? So this uh -huh. is how you, you look for it. You get the number that is on the left, this one, 1.9 1 .9 plus 0 .06. 0 0.06. It will give you 1.96. Uh -huh. This is the critical value that I was talking about. That's how you get okay. it. So I'll repeat the message from here. When you get your alpha, by the way, if in the question they say the significance level is it, 5%, just know that they have already given you the significance level, okay? But if they say okay. the confidence, the confidence interval, the confidence level, 
just subtract the confidence level from 100, then it will give you the significance level. So let's say your significance level now, instead of uh, that 0. Uh, okay, it was 0 0.05, right? 5%. Then you needed to divide it by two according to our table. So you divide this by two, it gave you 0 0.025, right? Then you subtract mm -hmm. this from one, one minus 0 0.025. I'm running you through quickly. Then we got it 0 0.9715. So you look for this area where you can find it. Okay, that's the area that you look for. Did you get it? Yes, I did, but can we go through this again? Okay, when we are done, can we go, just go through the question again? Okay. So I, I first I'm teaching you how to read the table. That's the most okay. important thing. The rest will be very straightforward. I am teaching you how to read the, the table. If the table says now the alpha, the confidence level is 10%, which means alpha is equal to what? 0 0.10, right? When you divide this by two, your alpha will be equal to what? To 0 0.05, right? When you divide this 10, 10 by 2, like 0 0.10 divided by 2, you get this side. Huh? That is if the significance level is 10%. So <clears throat> your alpha is 0 0.05, right? Hello? I'm here. Okay, so your alpha is 0 0.05. So you subtract this alpha from one, you say one minus 0 0.05. What do you get? We said one minus 0 0.05. You get 0 0.95. You get 0 0.95. Uh. Oh, yes. 0 .0 0 0.950. So we are looking for which area? This is the area that you look for now, 0 0.95, okay? So you come at the table, you look for that what? For that area on this table. And when you find, you locate the number, come to the left, go upward and add the two. I think you are now, a little bit better on how we get, we get the critical value, right? Yes, I am. Okay. If you're fine on how we get the critical value, then that is okay. At least then you are you're good. You're good if you know how we find the, the critical value. So going back to our question. Okay. Where was that? Oh, it was this one, right? Yeah, so this one was our question. So you, you have seen the way how they found it, right? This is your solution. Your X bar the mean plus or minus C. The critical value now, this one, okay? I've shown you how we get this one. Then the standard deviation times the standard deviation over what? Over the square root of uh, n so this is treated as one thing okay 0 0.35 divided by the square root of what 11 you divide that then you multiply by the critical value you get this number okay hello okay hello Hello. Hi, sorry, I had a call. Oh, okay. Did you get yeah. what I've said? No. I've said you multiply the critical value times this part, which is the, the standard deviation over the square root of n. When you multiply the two, you get 0 0.2068. Did you get that now? 
So uh, the square okay. root of 11. Uh, so you do, you do 0 0.35 <laughs> divided by the square root uh -huh. of what? 11, you find one number. This will be one number, of course. Then you multiply it by 1.96. You get, you will get this one, okay? So now, yes, to find the, the upper, to find the upper limit, this number, you just add 2.20 plus 0 0.2068. Then to find the this lower one, you instead of adding, you subtract, you will subtract from this one. Then you get this one. Okay. Okay. So you can add. And subtract to add, you're getting this upper one. To subtract, you're getting the lower one. So this is how you create the confidence what? The confidence interval. So now, the way how you make a decision, you ask yourself, what was your mean? Your mean was 2.4. 2 right? Around 2.4. Okay. Oh, not 2.4, it was 2.2, sorry. 2.20, that's the population, the sample mean, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Then when you check this number, this number is within this watch, this way, right? Mm -hmm. The hypothesized value is within the range. So if it is within the range, this range, then it means it is true, okay? All the parameters that you're given are true. Therefore, you fail to reject the what? The null hypothesis. Okay. Yes. Did you get something about the confidence interval? Yes, I did. You're better off now. Huh? You're, you're, you're better. You're better now, right? Yes. Um, Hello. Okay. Hi. Can you get? I can hear you. Am I on it? Okay, great. Yeah. Okay. I think you have you have seen all these now. I, I've explained already about what you can see at the board, right? This is called the standard error. I think you have, you have seen. It's also called the margin of error. This one. I think I've already explained mm -hmm. how you get this one, right? This part, the Z alpha. Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay. Then what is what is the what is it that is okay? The T statistics. Just something about the T. Okay. So you can also use the T, the T statistics to make the confidence interval. Okay. Now with the T statistics, you just pay attention a bit to this one, it is important. What happens is that you use the, the T when the population size is, is small, actually, that's the standard way of doing things. The, when the population is small, it means that it is less than 30. For example, in the previous question, we were supposed to use, we were supposed to use the T statistics, okay? Because the sample size was what? was 11, you're following, right? When the sample size is 30 and above, you, that's when you use the Z statistics. You get it, right? But the T statistics, you use it whenever the sample is less than what? Less than 30. Hello? I, I'm here. Okay. so. Everything remains the same, but uh, let me just show you how we get this critical value on the T statistics. So it is X bar plus or minus. The T statistics is alpha over two, comma, N minus one. Then the standard deviation over the square root of N, like that you apply. Okay. Observe that the critical value I've, I've extracted, how you find the critical value. Check. How do you find the critical value? It is T 
volatility and work. The critical value is found by saying T alpha over what? Two N minus C minus one, right? T is alpha over two N minus C minus one. Minus one. So let's say you have the same alpha that you had, right? Five five percent, which is same as zero point zero five divided by two. The alpha that you have is zero point what? Two five, right? The alpha level you have is five percent, right? Yes. Hello. Yes. Yes, yes. Then you need divide, when you divide it by two, it will be zero point two five or zero point zero uh, zero point zero two five when you divide it by two, zero point zero two five. This is your alpha now. Then e, comma any the n is the sample size. Okay, let's just say you have a sample size of about eleven, which is now less than what thirty. So your n n minus one it will be 11 minus what? One, and that will give you 10, right? This is yeah. called the degree of freedom. The degree of freedom is saying is found by saying n minus one. So when you're dealing with the T statistics, you need the degree of freedom. It's very easy to read. Just need the alpha comma the degree of freedom. The degree of freedom is what? n minus one. Then that will give you the critical value. Did you get that? Yes. Okay. Let me check if there is an example for that. Anyway, he's already explained. He's explaining the same thing. This is how the table he, at least here he had to put the table. The, the T table looks, he just extracted. Okay. The assumption here was he said let let sample size n be equal to what to three, right? Uh -huh. But I need to then your alpha b what b zero point one zero ten, then it, which means alpha over two b what zero point zero five, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh -huh. Then the question is that we need to do the same testing that we are doing. We want to create the interval, the confidence interval that we had created, but using the t statistics. So this is how it shall be. We are using the t statistics. You have to you have to have x bar plus or minus t the t the t alpha over two comma n minus one the degree of freedom. Okay, so now at that point it means that our alpha over uh, alpha over two is zero point what zero five. Comma, the degree of freedom would be three minus what? Three minus one, which would be two. So how you read it now, when you go to the T table, it is usually labeled as a T distribution table. You come this side where you find the degrees of freedom. There is two, right? Two here. Then you move here. On top here, you find the, what you call the upper tail, which is same as the alpha level, right? Alpha level, that's the upper tail. So you find the where there is 0 0.05, you see here. So where they meet, that's where you, that's how you select the what, the T value, the, the, the critical value using the T statistics. Did you get it? Yes, I have. Yes, for the Z1, is you are given alpha over two, then you go and look for that number on the table, then you move to the left, you move to the right, that is for the Z. But for the T statistics, no, what you do, you just need the degree of freedom, and the alpha level. So you go where the, we just check the degree of freedom is this. The alpha level is that. To find degree of freedom, we just say n minus what? Minus one. Is that clear? Yes, it's clear. That is about how to find the critical value. Everything will remain the same. It's just about the critical value. So that is what is there. So these are the different t critical values. These are different t critical values at different t confidence levels. When the confidence level is 80%, which means the significance level is 20%, right? When the confidence level is 80, then the significance will be 20. 
when the confidence level is 90, the significance level of what? Will be 10, right? Yes. When the confidence level is 95, then the significance level of 5%. And when it is 99, the significance level will be 9%. So these are the what are the are the are the critical values, okay? The T values when you are when the degrees of freedom are ten, and when the degree of freedom is twenty, and when the degree of freedom is what is thirty, just like that, okay? So, so we just did some few calculations just you can get the same way in short you just say degree of freedom commodity the alpha level of which this is the alpha level you're coming up with the same figures it's the same. okay okay yeah so you have seen that when you have an example like this one the sample size is 25 which is less than 30. The mean is now 50, right? Your X by C is 50, okay? Your X by is 50, and the, the standard deviation is what? Is eight. Then the confidence level is 95, which means the significance level is what? 5%, right? <laughs> then you need to create the confidence interval. You say the degree of freedom is n minus one, which will be 25 minus one, 24, right? This is the degree of freedom, 24. Then alpha over two would be 5% divided by two, which would be 0 0.025, like that. Then you just go on that table, the T table, okay? Where the degree of freedom is 24, comma where the alpha level is what? Is C, 0 0.025, you go there like where they meet. So according to this question, they meet on 2.0639, okay? That is your critical value. You put it here, multiply by standard deviation over the square root. You multiply this and you form only one number, okay? Then you can add to 50 to find this upper limit or subtract from 50 to find this lower limit. Are you fine now? on how we deal with the confidence level. Hello? Hello? Madam Kristen? Hello? Hello?